What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender animation tutorial for you. So I think one of the things that doesn't get talked about very much is the ability to link the movement of different objects together in Blender in order to drive those movements. So I thought I'd make a quick introduction video talking you through the basics of how to do that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this simple clock object that I've just imported as a plane. So it's just an image as a plane inside of Blender. And I'm gonna start by modeling out a couple of hands on the clock. So I'm just gonna create a simple plane. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I'm gonna scale it down. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode, move this up, move this down like this. And I'm going to select this object into a control B to bevel it. And I just want to go into the bevel settings and affect the vertices. I just want to bevel off these edges just a little bit. I don't want to get super complicated with the clock arms because they're not really the, the central part of this tutorial. But then I'm just going to tap A and I'm going to extrude these up. A little bit. So just something simple like this so that we have an object in here. Then I'm going to tap back into object mode and add a black material like this. So one thing that we need to note about this is the object needs its origin to be on this central point, right? So if I rotate this right now, it's not going to rotate around the right point. So there's a couple different ways that you could do this. So one way that you could do this is you could do a shift right click and put your 3D cursor on this point and then just do an object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now what's happened is that origin is now on the surface um, in the middle of the object where my 3D cursor was. So I have the minute hand. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this minute hand right here. So I'm just gonna do a shift D, then I'm gonna tab into the new object and just adjust it in wireframe mode a little bit so that it's shorter like this. We're gonna go ahead and call this good for this uh, this example. So now we've got our clock hands in here. Both of them rotate around that central axis, right? Well, now what I want to do is I want to set these up where the, the hour hand follows the minute hand. This is a demonstration of how drivers work. Basically, a driver is a way that you can use the movement of one object to drive another object. So first thing I want to do is I want to go into my object constraints for each one of these. I'm going to add an object constraint um, that limits my rotation. And I'm gonna set these so that my X and Y rotation are limited to zero. And one thing you may wanna do before you do that is you wanna make sure that you apply your rotation and scale for this to work properly. So now I'm gonna add that constraint. I'm gonna limit this on the X and Y to zero and zero. That means that I can no longer rotate this on the X or Y axis. So notice how I am locked on those axes, so I can literally only rotate this on the X axis. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with my minute hand. So we're just gonna limit our rotation like this. So now that one can only rotate on that axis as well. So now what we wanna do is we wanna create a simple driver. We wanna link our minute hand to our hour hand like this. And so the way that we can do that is we want to go into the hour hand settings under item. Notice how there's an option in here where you can adjust the rotation, right? So I can click and drag in here. I can type in a value. Well, another thing you can do is you can also right click in here and click on the option for add driver. And so when you add a driver, what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to let you use math um, and other objects in order to drive the movement of this object. So when I add this driver, what I want to do is I want to set this up where it's pulling the rotation value, the X value from another object. So in this driver, what we want to do is we want to select from the drop down right here, we want to select our minute hand. But what we want is we want to pull the X rotation, right? So we want to link the X rotation of our minute hand to our hour hand. So now if I rotate, my minute hand, notice how my hour hand is rotating as well. So that's great, but it's not working like a clock would work. So what we wanna do is we wanna edit this driver. Notice how there's a, there's a box in here to add an expression or a math formula. So what it's doing is it's taking the variable, which in this case is the X rotation value, and it's doing nothing to it, right? It's adding zero. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna type in divided by 12 and hit the enter key. 
and then we want to click on the update dependencies. So now what that's going to do is that's going to take the rotation value of the minute hand and it's going to apply it to our hour hand like this, but it's going to apply it in a way where it's divided by 12. So now if I rotate this, notice how if I rotate this 360 degrees, this is now pointing at the one right here. If I rotate it again, all the way around to 720, it's pointing to the two. And so we could also set this with a value. So let's say we wanted this to be five o'clock, right? So we could type in five times 360. That's gonna put us at 1800. Well, notice how this is now pointing at five o'clock. So now we've got an actual working clock inside of Blender. All right, so that's a very basic implementation of drivers, but we can talk more about other things that we can do with these in the future. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you found this helpful, if this is something you might use. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.